Hello everyone, welcome to the YouTube channel, The Narrow Path, blah, 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 the Narrow Path Live in Color. It's been, gosh, it's been a little minute since I was with y'all, like 11 days ago. Um, got a haircut, you know, starting to look respectable, not all disheveled. Um, just, I've been kind of, you can tell, I've been a little under the weather for the last week or so. And um, so, yeah, so took a little break, so I didn't hack on you, and hopefully I won't be doing that today. I'm, I'm excited because we, we may wrap up Chapter 16 of Romans today. It means we will have finished the Book of Romans, and that's quite an undertaking, and we, we kind of came at it from different ways. And although I may do a book from time to time, I feel like uh, my, my, uh, my quest going forward is to start a topic on what's wrong with the world. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully next week we'll get to you on that. And we'll try to really spend time talking about that from a New Testament, from an Old Testament standpoint, how we got here. Because a lot of people don't have a really good grasp of the Old Testament. And it has uh, a lot of really bad theologies, I think, that result from that. We've talked a lot about that. We'll get into it as we go on. But I want to get today, I'm not going to read a chapter and then start just kind of unpack it. I'm just going to kind of unpack it as I read. We may finish. Um, we may not, and that's okay. Um, we'll definitely finish it the next time if we don't. So let's get right into Romans 16. Paul's closing arguments, talking to the church. He says, I commend to you, verse 1, your sister Phoebe, um, who is a servant of the church, which is in Centria, which is the eastern seaport of Corinth. She evidently was a courier of Paul's letter to Rome, possibly a deaconess. Okay, so all of you don't think women can be leaders in the church. Hmm? So she was a deaconess, so we'll have to chew on that, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 2, that you receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints, the elect, the, the precious holy ones that God has called out. Receive her in that manner, and that you help her in whatever manner she may have need of for you, for she herself has also been a helper of many and myself as well. So Paul's laying the groundwork down as to how we should desire to take care of and minister to those who minister to us in word and in deed um, in the church. And then verse 3, he says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, Priscilla and Aquila. And they were basically uh, tent makers uh, with Paul and possibly fellow prisoners at, at some times. They, they were fellow workers with Jesus. So they were, they, by day, they were tent makers, but by night, they, they were missionaries. They were church planners. And um, they possibly came back from, uh, um, came back from Corinth, possibly from Claudius's band that we talked about there back in Rome. Verse 4, who for my life risked their own necks. So obviously prison. And then if you go to Acts uh, 19, you look at the uprising in Ephesus. Uh, Priscilla and Aquila were the deal, and uh, they were Paul's right-hand men and women in their ministry. To whom not only do I give thanks, but also the churches of the Gentiles. So they've been a great ministry to the whole Gentile church, as Paul wraps up and gives his salutations. He says, also greet the church that is in their house. So there's a, there's a church that they've now, they can't go anywhere without putting together a church, because that's what they do. And so they put together a church in their house. He says, Greet Epinitus, uh, my beloved, who is the first convert from Christ from Asia. Um, um, church history says he was probably the founder of the Colossian church or a uh, fellow prisoner mentioned in uh, Philemon, uh, verse 23, possibly uh, the first bishop to suffer martyrdom, martyrdom in Colossae. So there's a couple things about some of these people that are just interesting to note. As Paul's making greetings of people that um, we may know a little something about. Verse 6, it says, Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Adronicus and Junias, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are outstanding among the apostles. Interesting, Paul mentions other apostles that are not a part of the 12, uh, plus him, uh, who were also in Christ before me, 25 years already at that time. Um, so quite interesting. Um, and so most of these guys were uh, apostles in that time, were certainly apostles who uh, were witness of the res resurrected Christ and who worked in 
and miracles and signs, but we don't totally know that that's how he's referring to them in that way. If they're just trailblazers like Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, but he greets them. He says, Greet Amplitus, my beloved in the Lord, greet Urbanus, a fellow worker in Christ, and Stachus, my beloved, greet Apelles, the proved in Christ, greet those who are the household of Aristobulus. Um, possibly the tradition says this was Barnabas's brother who later became a missionary to Great Britain. And we know that Great Britain, uh, possibly as early as the second century, had um, uh, a, a Christian influence in that region. So the church has been there a long time. Verse 11, greet Herodian, my kinsman, greet those of the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Common name, Narcissus. Oh, man, that's kind of a good name to have, you know. And um, anyway, though, uh, I, I've known a few of those narcissists in my life. Have you known some? They move around a lot. You know, it's, this guy kind of had it tough with that name. But anyway, he says, Greet Trophena and Trophosa, workers in the Lord. Greet Persis, the beloved who worked very hard in the Lord. Simon the Cyrene's boy. Greet Rufus. Simon the Cyrene's boy. Carried the cross. A choice man in the Lord, also his mother and mine. Greet Asinocritus, Philagan, Hermes, Patrobas, Hermas, and the brethren with them. Greet Philagus and Julia, uh, Neris and his sister Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. Now the Orthodox still do this. I think it's a pretty, pretty good practice to uh, greet one another with a holy kiss. Maybe you don't want to kiss me. That's okay. I'm just talking about a little kiss on the cheek. But that was a common uh, tradition of the early church. That may not be a bad one. You know, of course, us Americans, we get all freaky dicky about stuff like that. Anyway, so we're going to get into it. Let's see what we can do here um, to wrap up today. If not, we're just going to. We're, we're not going to. Verse 17. Now I urge you. He's getting into some meat here as he wraps up. To keep your eye on those who cause dissensions and hindrances, contrary to the teaching which you learned, and turn away from them. So the dissensions and hindrances are talking about factions and hostilities. Paul already talked about that concerning the essentials of men. And he, so he says to them, listen, you're gonna, this is going to happen. He talked about it in Acts. Uh, be aware of contradictory teaching to what we taught. There are some essentials, and this is what Paul's talking about, um, that he wants them to be aware of. There's going to be people that are going to come in and try to mess the whole deal up. And so he wants them to be aware. First uh, Timothy 1 3 says, Don't don't teach strange doctrines. Okay. Uh, 6 3 tells us that the doctrine we're to be most concerned about, the essentials are the doctrine conforming one. To godliness. So if your doctrine is without godliness, then you've got some contradictory teaching, some contradictory uh, doctrine. Um, in fact, Galatians uh, 1 8 would say that if someone came teaching another gospel, that let him be a curse. So um, the non essentials, not a big deal for Paul. The essentials, the mainstays, the main things of the church. Paul's very serious about, and specifically those who are leading us towards uh, being true godly people in Christ. And then he says in uh, Titus 3.10, reject a factious man after a, a second warning. Um, and and this, is, this is something that um, um, we sometimes have to do in the church. If somebody's just constantly causing problems and can't be reasoned with and thought was like look man you know maybe this is not the place for you maybe it's not the church for you but they encourage you to move along now sometimes we have to do that because if somebody's arguing over non-essentials and we talked at length uh, chapter 14 and 15 about that then that's a nothing burger but if someone is trying to take away from the core essentials of the faith this is something that we we can't allow the church uh, a path to, for the church to go down and he talks further. He says, here's the real deal. Such men are slaves, but not of our Lord Jesus Christ, because we're supposed to be slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites, their, their gluttony, their self-indulgence, 
Um, and Philippians uh, three nineteen talks about that. You might want to go and take it just to do a little extra commentary. But it's their own appetites, their own self indulgence, their own desire to be famous, but not necessarily to be righteous. Okay, and by their smooth and flattering speech, their golden tongued orders, evidently maybe a little better than Paul. Who knows? And they can get the job done. They can woo them. They can woo the crowd. They deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So these pervasive arguments, these plausible uh, arguments, and the root cause is is their own their own slavery, but not towards Jesus, towards self indulgence, towards greed, towards the me, my, and I, making sure that I am in the limelight, I'm in the top spot, I'm the top dog. Sleep, the slick talk that they use. And so they put forth these arguments um, to try to uh, divert the unsuspecting, naive, un people who don't discern well, and there are plenty out there, okay, particularly regarding the spiritual uh, discernment. Uh, I find, guys, that a lot of people just do not have spiritual discernment. And and guys, quite honestly, it, it's not. It, it has mostly. It's not because it's a secret recipe, a secret sauce. A lot of people just they they don't they don't devote time in the word. They they think you know one minute devotionals are are the stuff that you know God God made for us and handed down uh, as manna from heaven. He he did not. Um, uh, the Jewish people who left us the legacy, uh, they did not leave us that kind of legacy to be half ass. Um, with the Word of God in any way, shape, or form, and you shouldn't do it either. You should, you should love the Word of God in your time with the Lord more than anything else in your in your life, so that you can know Him, and so you won't be led astray by contradictory teaching, so that you will um, have that spiritual discernment. And Paul says, um, this is something that people, if they're not rooted in it correctly. Um, they're they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna drown in it quite easily. They're just gonna be engulfed by it, and they're just gonna go along whichever way, and um, they're never gonna get anywhere in their faith. And it's a really sad thing to watch. And so he refers again in verse uh, nineteen. He says, "For the report of your obedience, okay, we're in the church overall, okay, has reached to all. Therefore, I am I am rejoicing over you. However, he says, but I want you to be innocent but to be wise in what is good and innocent of praise and evil to be wise in what is good but to be innocent in what is evil and of course again this only comes through the spirit and through biblical discernment um, and he says be innocent in what is evil be wise in what is good we're to pay attention to these things. This is how we have spiritual discernment. This is how we can help guide the church on the path that she uh, must stay on so that we can be faithful to what God has called us to. And then here's the great hope of the Christian in this hour. In verse 20, Paul says, and really this is straight from Genesis 3.15, the first prophecy in the Bible that has, first of all, uh, first part has been fulfilled, Jesus coming, Genesis 3.15. Paul says in verse 20 of chapter 16, The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And if you go and read Genesis 3.15, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. There will be enmity between the seed and the woman's seed, and, um, and he will crush his head. And he's, of course, talking about the crushing that Jesus did on the cross, and then he's going to have the final crushing, which uh, we may be starting to witness. Maybe it won't be long before we see him come in the cloud. Would be fine by me. Uh, I don't even pretend to think I understand fully what that means and what I might have to go through as a result of it. But I just know whatever we're doing down here, it ain't working too good. It's not working too well at all. He says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. So this great hope he leaves us with. <coughs> and then we're going to wrap up with these last verses. He talks about uh, Timothy, my fellow worker, greets you. So does Lucius and Jason. 
possibly from the house of Jason in Acts 17. But then he says, talks about uh, Tertius. So he'll write this letter, greet you in the Lord. Paul's a secondary editor, Gaius, somebody that Paul baptized in Corinth. He talks about in verse 23. He greets you. Erastus, the city treasurer, greets you. And it's always good to have a good treasurer on your team, on your home team. Is it not? Yes. And Cordius, the brother. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And then he's going to leave some parting words in verse 25 and 27. Now to him who is able to establish or confirm you according to my gospel, the gospel of grace, because of Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, okay, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which has been kept secret, for long times past has now been made fully known, fully disclosed. We're always to be rooted in this once a mystery, but now been revealed mystery. And that is all of Scripture. The mystery is unfolded through all of Scripture. If you think you're just going to walk around with your New Testament and you're going to be sufficient to, to understand the grasp of all things regarding this mystery, you're going to be sorely lacking. Okay. Sorely, sorely lacking. There are 66 books you need to pay attention to. And I want to encourage you highly to do that. And then Paul says, But now is manifested this mystery, and by the scriptures of the prophets, which means all the prophets and all the scriptures. Have I said that enough already? According to the commandment of eternal God has been made known to all nations, leading to obedience of faith. And so here I want to tell you that it's our goal to make sure that that gospel is continued to be known among all the nations. And guess what? It's not just the preaching of the gospel. Our goal is nothing less than the obedience and faith of the people who accept the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is something you and I and the Paul wants to leave with us. He says, let the mystery be tangible and live. Let the mystery be tangible and live obedience. And that's a lot that we've been through the book of Romans. I encourage you to go back if you if you jumped in late, go back and start with the introduction and go through. I, I think you'll get a lot of good from it. I think you'll get a good grasp of what the book of Romans is trying to teach and what it's not trying to teach. Um, I'm really excited that we've uh, We've gone through the book of Romans, something that I really had wanted to do for a long time. But pray for me. I'm, I'm hoping to see that I still bring some value to you. And so I want to go in a different direction and cover some topics and some things that are perhaps very much missed. And maybe, first of all, the story is that I want to cover is the story of the Bible through the Old Testament to get the New Testament because most people just don't have a really good grasp of that. And we want to keep things... Um, we want to keep things out there so that we understand all of what God is saying. Anyway, good day. God bless you. Pray for me. Get rid of this. Yep. Crud. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day. Be sure to like this uh, video. Be sure to subscribe. And hit the all button and the bell and all these will come to you. Be sure to share them with someone else if it blessed you. And then also go to martinoprince.com. Eight years worth of madness there on the narrow path. David Mannings of the Cracked Up American Life, searching for the Jesus missing in America, and often in me. Have fun at that. But I'm really excited. Our next topic, when you see me again, maybe Saturday, maybe next week, is what's wrong with the world. I'll give you a little hint, though. Maybe you and I have something to do with it. Good day.